Yeah, I'm not phasing a lot. You gotta remember all your sayings. <laughs> I have sayings? Hi everybody. It's been a little bit since I've done a beers on a boat. We're here on Tritea. It's blowing around 20 constantly, gusts of 30. The mast is laying on the boat. <laughs> Do you want to see it? I'll show it to you. Mr. Steady is keeping watch. Hi, Mr. Steady. He's looking for seals. Here's the mast. Everything looks crazy right now. You go boy. And so I figured I deserved a beer. And so do you. So grab one and we can have a beer together. So we're officially moved onto Tritea. It's been kind of crazy. Uh whittling down all of our stuff and moving in and trying to figure out what is what and with all the projects going around. Um, one of the really neat things about living down here is because we're right on the water, obviously, um, there are lots of creatures to see. And I've been keeping count of the sea slugs that I see and the stingrays that I like to call the pancakes and some of our favorite and most entertaining animals down here are the night herons um, and I was in one of my favorite beer stores in LA called Glendale Tap thank you guys and I found um, this is a grisette from Jester King and it has a night heron on it He's so cute and like kind of angry and in the posture that they always are in. <laughs> um, and later I'll show you some of the night herons that are our neighbors here in the trees. They share the trees with, so they arrived earlier, maybe over a month ago at least. Um, and then the cattle egrets came and the egrets they all make really weird noises, but the egrets make even crazier noises. But we like the night herons better. They're, um, they're moody and they're very handsome. Um, and we'll see if this grisette with blackberries is anything like that. Um, if you don't know, well, <clears throat> if you don't know what a grisette is, it is sort of like a saison and we've talked about saisons before they're from um, in between France and Belgium uh, they're wild ales and those in beer de guards were made um, with open fat fermentation so all of the like yeasts and cool guys flying into the beer and um, fermenting it and making it um, have all the different kinds of uh, the just the, the flavor profiles of the yeasts are different um and those were both primarily i believe drank by people who worked on farms because that's where they made them um and they were sometimes a sort of higher not high alcohol content but higher than a grisette a grisette um it means little gray one and it was mainly drank by miners um and I think maybe the little, like the, the girls who served the beer at the pubs, um, they wore little like gray dresses. So that might be why it's called little gray one. Um, but they don't have typically um, a, as high of alcohol content as a Saison does. And this one has, what is it? 5.3 so that seems pretty typical for the style um, and the the yeast quality um, in and of itself can have a fruity flavor um, 
depending on I you know that's a typical thing for like that region of um, of Europe to have those those aspects to the just from a, a, like a malt and a hop getting that quality but then this is this is fruited on top of that so this is blackberries added to it and um, Jester King is known for um, doing wild ales and also lots of lots of different interesting things they're from outside of Austin they have a farm um, I think that let's see what their bottle says Chester King is a brewery, farm, tasting room, and restaurant in the beautiful Texas Hill Country on the outskirts of Austin. Um, this has Texas Hill Country well water, malted barley, blackberries, malted wheat, rolled oats, raw wheat, hops, mixed culture of brewer's yeast and native yeast and bacteria. So that native yeast and bacteria is probably... Um, the kind of what traditionally would have happened where they leave um, they leave a vat open for things to and it sounds weird but this is what makes um, some of these beers really special is that the yeast and the bacteria fly through the air into it um, and add to the fermentation so I'm gonna open it and this um, this is this is from October 2020 um, there's the guy. We'll show you the real ones. Not, not it's too windy. They're all in their nest right now. Um, but I'll, I'll get some footage and add it. Um, I've got my trusty sizzler. I love this thing. It's Japanese. It's a bottle opener slash bottle keeper. So you can, um, if I don't drink all this, which... I probably will. Um, but if I didn't, I could, it's spring loaded and I could like put this back on to the beer. Um, but let's open it. Got the bub going. I can already smell the like wild. pretty blackberry y but it doesn't smell like sweet sweet got a little bub going my best friend from college Megan made me these amazing SV Triteo um, Los Angeles glasses look at them they're so cute she did the etching I love you Megan thank you um, so these are my official beers on a boat tasting glasses I've got two little ones that whenever come somebody comes to visit or um, guest on my show, then you get to drink out of one of Megan's glasses. So. Very effervescent. It's got a nice, pretty um, rouge, rouge to it. Um, small bubble. Smells nice. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, it's tart. Definitely has the blackberry, has a little bit of rose to it, a little like black pepper, which is also typical of the the kind of beer of Saison being peppery. Um You can taste the hop in the back. It has a nice round bitterness. Ooh. It does have that like sour bite, like right back in whatever these little, these guys are. Um, I don't know, that's pretty solid beer. Um, Jester King, when I was looking, had the, like the selection that was at Glendale Tap had a bunch of different grisettes, which I bet you they make um, in a, like, they make the big batch of that, like, standard wild ale, and then they separate it out into littler batches, and then they fruit that batch. They probably, that's my guess. I could look it up. Um, but...
the sourness is not just from the berries, it's from the, the fermentation itself. But what I was trying to say is that they had, they had lots of different flavors of grisettes. So they had different, like a cherry one and a, I can't remember what other, but I got this one because our, our bird friend was on it. What kind of food would go good with that one? <clears throat> kind of food? Um, hmm. I would like some, like a smoky blue cheese um, with like uh, the dark bread. Um, I think it would be, that's the, the like, like fruity, soury, not too heavy beers like this um, can pair really well sometimes with spicy food um, where usually you wouldn't you wouldn't imagine just because they have that acidity and the freshness to like balance balance it out i think it would it would actually be a very really nice beer with a lot of different things um since it's from outside of austin you could probably throw down on some barbecue and drink this and feel like confused about how fancy and also how how <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. This is a a working man's working person's working woman's beer. This was made for people getting done at the mine. Um, so don't feel afraid of the grisette. It's here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk about the night herons though? Mm hmm. Make the sound. Show them what sound they make. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful and serious. And then they go, Wah! They go, Wah! 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 Yeah, they're, it's the most, like, like comical, ungraceful, like, n doesn't match. They're, like, because they're, like, very brooding. They're always, like, Captain James yeah, they, identifies as one. They have the fancy rat tail, though. Yeah, they also have this, like, beautiful, you can even see it on this guy, on the bottle. They've got, oh, well, as a person. um, but the real ones have this, like, fancy couple of feathers that look like a like a rat tail um which i also think is very charming um and they go and they have red eyes don't they yeah and they've got spooky red eyes um and the babies or the like juvenile ones are we'll see if we can find both the full-grown ones are white here with a like i think they're actually technically black capped night herons but they've got the black like hood almost um and then the the juvenile ones are like brown and white speckled um so we'll we'll see if we can find both for you and also them shouting because they do a lot of shouting around here although you can't hear them at all not because it's so so windy but i think they're all bedded down in their in their tree houses have you had that type of beer before? Mm hmm I've had different grisettes before. Um, this is not, this is actually really nice. It's not overly fruited. It's not like blackberry. Um, it's definitely on the, like, it, it definitely tastes like that sort of French Belgian style of sour um, with a little bit of fruit, which is not unusual for them to put fruit in it. Also, it's not just some Texans being wild with the style. Um, people would, do it. Would you have bought that if it didn't have the night heron on the label? I would have maybe bought, well, I actually was like eyeballing a cherry one. I don't know, I was in like a cherry mood. Not that I, I'm not even usually a cherry guy, but I was like looking at the Jester King stuff already because I already like their beer. 
Um, but then I saw the night here, and, and and I could not say no. Look at this crazy guy. This is gonna be blurry. Yeah. Let's see if we can smell about it. If you really wanted to be proper about this, you'd have a sort of um, tulip-shaped cup that would funnel the smells from the beer like more into your snoot, so you could really like. It's a little apricotty to me. Um, I like that it's not very sweet. It's got like a tea-like quality, almost a like, like a. Mm, it's got some sort of tea, like that's like like a tannin almost. Um, but she sure is pretty. Got that nice, tiny little white bubble on the red. <clears throat> um, I think that I would give this beer an 8 out of 10 sheets to the wind. Um, because it is refreshing and flavorful and falls well within the style of the kind of beer that it is. Um, while taking a creative twist to it. And I also like the label. So I decided after another glass of this <laughs> that it is not quite an eight. And it's not because it's a bad beer, but I just don't want to drink a ton of it. I am actually going to use my little Japanese Sizzler bottle keeper and put it in the fridge because it's a little bit too not strong as in hot it's not alcohol -y. um and it's good i think it's just like not vibing me quite right it's like it's a little bit too sour um to be super drinkable for me i'm not a like and that's the thing it's not it's not crazy sour but um, I would like to give it a seven sheets to the wind instead of an eight because it is not quite. I was delighted to drink it at first, but now I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit beleaguered of the um, spicy fruitiness of it. And maybe I'm just getting boring in my old age, but. What are you going to drink instead? I'm going to put. An IPA <laughs> in the freezer so it gets cold so I can drink it. If you have a chance, you should um, grab something from Jester King if you can at your local bottle shop. I highly recommend their beers. Um, and if you can't find Jester King, uh, Grisette is a really nice style of beer to drink um, as the weather warms up. So since it's springy outside, um, go find one and try it for yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed having a beer with me, please like and subscribe. It helps us a lot. Um, I'm going to keep drinking the rest of this while I cook us some dinner and we listen to the wind howl outside. Until next time, cheers. your favorite beer right now? 
My favorite, one of my favorite beers right now is Wow Pop. It's a like super crushable, clear West Coast style IPA. This is one of my favorites lately. Um, we've been going to a place near Long Beach um, that has a Smog City Brewing Company uh, tap room. Uh, ch -ch -ch. They're, they, they brew in Torrance in California. Um, this is their Wow Pop, and I'm really into it. It's, um, it's just an IPA. <laughs> it's brewed with Yukonot, um, Simcoe, and Centennial hops. They say this one is their crushable IPA, and it entirely is. It's 6%, I think. But it doesn't even taste like it. It's so drinkable. It's like super like smooth and clean and like not too bitter. And I think that I just got like, when it was cold, I was drinking a lot of hazies and then um, it started to warm up and like, I was just like, whoa, like they were just too heavy and Finding an IPA that is not blowing my palate out, super, super hoppy, um, and then is also not like filling me up the way that a hazy does is just like, this is like, in a way, such a classic, classic IPA. It shouldn't be as rare to find something so drinkable. Um, and I will do, I guess I've just reviewed that one also. <laughs> but um, you can watch me drink it next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time. <laughs>